I'm in a tough position. I work in a bakery, but I've used every single life option I have available to pay for my daughter's college. I'm talking $300,000 in debt just to make sure my baby girl has a chance to make it in life. So can you imagine my disappointment when she spits in my face and says, Dad, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mother and I'm not using my doctorate degree for anything. I don't recognize my daughter anymore. She's not the girl we raised nor the kind of adult my wife and I hoped she would become. Certainly not the kind of daughter we sacrificed so much for. With the recent turn of events, I'm torn. As I type this, my hands are shaking and my heart is heavy. I don't want to badmouth my own child, but I've got no choice. I keep on asking myself what I've done to deserve a child like Ruby. And I come up blank every time. There's no answers to my questions. No one to point at the wrong I've committed. So... I find myself here typing an unpleasant story, and that's my life. You're free to judge, criticize, advise, I'd welcome it all, before getting to the core of the problem. Let me give you a bit of context. I'm a mason, a 59-year-old baker, and a father who suffers because of the love of his child. When Grace and I were blessed with a beautiful girl after four years of marriage and countless miscarriages, we were over the moon. When I held my tiny daughter for the first time, wrapped in pink, an image formed at the back of my mind with such clarity that I still remember it clear to this day. I'd envisioned a beautiful young woman in a doctor's coat with a sincere smile on her face as she tends to her patients. I've carried that image with me for years and stopped at nothing to fulfill Ruby's desires. She was intelligent, very intelligent child, sharp and focused. When she poured her heart and soul into studies, I felt at ease. I could see my dream coming true, but I hadn't realized that dream can shatter even after they've achieved everything. It wasn't easy, providing for Ruby's education. I'm just a baker, and my friend's bakery. We live from hand to mouth and sometimes get to save a little. That's how it always has been. At first, Grace had wanted to work alongside me, but her health did not leave us with much of an option. With the miscarriages and other chronic diseases, she seemed to catch every now and then. It was impossible for her to work. I couldn't see her struggling, and certainly not when she wanted to have a child in that condition, too. That's part of the reason why she became a housewife, and neither of us ever regretted the decision we've made. When Ruby made it to a medical college, I went out of my way to pay for my daughter's fees. I didn't let her work as a part-timer, believing that jobs will be a hindrance to her path to success. I preferred to ask for favors for my friends and relatives, everyone who cared for me and didn't mind helping me out financially. Once again, Grace did offer her help, but I refused. I love my wife, and I couldn't see her in pain again. I was confident that I'll succeed and that my daughter will be able to reach our dream. With this thought, I managed Ruby's fees, believing that shaping her future took preference overall, and it was my burden to bear. Little did I know that I'd be crushed alive underneath it. It was the proudest day of my life when Ruby graduated. I was the happiest father on earth. I could see my daughter working as a doctor, tending to those who needed her. Ruby was beside herself too. I can't forget the proud spark in her eyes and the smile that brightened her entire face. But it all came crashing down just after a year of her practice. Ruby began to change. I was drunk with pride and happiness, so I turned a blind eye to the little changes in her. Grace, on the other hand, started to worry. She tried to warn me, telling me to talk to Ruby because she didn't listen to her mother anymore. I told her that Ruby was entering her professional life, and that changes were just a part of it. I told my wife to put her worries aside for our daughter to be successful, and she was happy as she'd achieved her aim with our unwavering support. As it turned out, Grace's concerns were rightly placed. The alarm in my mind went off nightly for Ruby, and when she brought one of her fellow practitioners, Gabriel Ross, to meet us. 
I'd been taken aback by his appearance for someone as refined as Ruby. Gabriel was a carefree young man whose father had played to clear his path every step of the way. I did try to talk to my daughter, but she was adamant about being with Gabriel. My kind of loving Grace was rebuked by the very woman she'd raised herself. Grace had left her job and everything else to be a mother to her daughter. Yet Ruby had thrown all her mother's efforts out the window in a single moment. When she realized that we were not happy with her relationship, she stopped coming to us. Sometimes we could hear her voice over the phone and get to know how she was holding out, but she pretty much cut us off from her life. Despite all this, I believed in her. With time, Grace stopped smiling and eventually stopped eating. She missed her daughter, and so did I. Grace started losing weight, which frightened me, and the doctors said that it was stress that was eating away at her, so I had no choice to, to make her sit down and talk to her. All she mentioned was the total amount we'd paid for Ruby's medical degree in practice. $300,000. Well, I'd been busy taking and paying back the loans by keeping my rations and other personal requirements to a bare minimum, my wife had been maintaining a record. She was ridden with guilt for being unable to provide help for her. I hadn't known that, which is why it hurt even more. We gave Ruby the space she needed. It was important that she figured it out herself. I'd hope that Ruby will fall out of love and just will come to realize that true purpose and meaning of her life. I believe that once she's done with her practice and finally starts working as a doctor at some hospital, she'll mature. But fate had more challenges in store for me and my wife. One stormy night, Ruby had turned up at her doorstep with a one-year-old boy in her arms. The child was Gabriel's who fled the moment Ruby had mentioned marriage. Grace and I were absolutely petrified, confused and hurt, but we were thankful too for our daughter had come back to us. I wish I'd known that it was the beginning of chaos in our lives. Well, let's go ahead and fast forward a bit. Three years later, my daughter's still living with us. She's a daughter in the name only, for there's no sign of empathy in her heart, nor any sign of love for the parents who raised her. She's not keen to start her professional career at a hospital. Whenever I try to talk to her, she leaves the room without saying a word. I don't know what to do about her. I can't go ask my friends and relatives for advice because they'll just laugh at me. They'll remind me of their reprimands, which I'd ignored for years. They told me not to spoil Ruby, not to fulfill every wish of an immature heart. I have so many regrets, and I feel as if I'm suffocating underneath them. About an hour ago, she dropped another bombshell on us. It's the final straw this time. She's applied for early retirement and has decided to live as a stay-at-home mother like Grace was for her. I raised my voice at her, and she screamed as she's never done before. She blamed me for forcing my dream onto her. She believes that she was meant for something else, but I took that option away from her. So, I leave you with this, asking you guys, am I the a-hole? What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. This story is just getting started. Update number one is about to pop off. Guys, if you're new to the channel, take a second right now and click that subscribe button. And let's go ahead and hop into update number one. I'm grateful for the overwhelming response to my post and I'm surprised to see that many can relate to my pain. Some of you have suggested therapy. Believe me, I've thought about it. When she came back with no intention of continuing her job, I proposed visiting a therapist which was angrily turned down by my daughter. She assured me that she did not suffer at Gabriel's hands, nor him walking out on her at a traumatic event. Still, I recommended that we attend at least one session, but she twisted my advice around. She told me that I suspect my own daughter, who believed her to be psychologically unwell, she tried to make me understand that she's only trying to walk on an easier path when it's available to her. At least, that's what she insists on. Ruby doesn't care and might never. 
This is what I've told Grace, but it's hard for my wife to accept. She's a mother who'd sacrificed all her dreams for the sake of her daughter. Often, I find Grace standing beside the mantelpiece and gazing at Ruby's medical certificate. It's catching dust there, all my daughter's hard work and sacrifices. Not to mention a huge amount of money we went for her with just now a piece of paper. Last night, I sat down with my daughter and tried to talk to her. She presented many reasons, and no matter how unreasonable they sounded, I couldn't argue with her. Not with my wife sleeping just a few feet away. Ruby told me that she's tried working at a hospital, and tending to countless patients just exhausts her. She can't stand their pleas for help and certainly cannot run about over sick people. I was shocked at the coldness in my daughter's voice, and the nonchalance which she talked about others' pain. I'd wanted her to be a doctor to sympathize with others, not to turn a blind eye to their suffering. This is not at all Ruby. Ruby believes that her superiors weren't sincere with her and they wanted her to be their errand lady and often talk down to her. When she said these words, I could see where I've gone wrong. All their life, I provided her with pretty much everything she ever asked for. I kept telling her how smart she was and capable, and it wasn't just me. Her teachers also praised her. I guess she became used to it. She started to believe that she was the best, and once she stepped into a professional lifestyle, she was treated differently. As a rookie. It was something she couldn't handle. Couldn't come to terms with. She did what she's doing now, seeking an easy way out instead of providing for herself. Well, as I type this, I feel as if I am the a-hole. It is my fault, and I'm clueless about how to deal with my daughter who's an adult now. A mother. I can't stand the current situation in my house, and every time I step in through the threshold of hearing Ruby's voice, I feel as if an invisible force has started to choke me. Grace, yeah, she never smiles anymore. She never speaks more than a sentence or two to us. Because of one, mature women or home has become a distressing abode. Update number two. Once again, I can't seem to thank you enough for all the suggestions in the comment section. Believe me when I say that I've considered each and every one of them. Those with children of their own will understand very well that I can't turn my back on my only child, regardless of how selfish she becomes. Today, another incident has brought me back here, and I believe that times has come to make some solid decisions. Something that won't hurt my daughter but makes her realize the errors of her way. After a long day at work, I walked into the house to find Ruby arguing with Grace. Without knowing the context of the argument, I knew that it was about my daughter lounging around the house and making zero effort to make our lives a little easier. Grace wants her to go back to work or find someone she enjoys instead. Instead, Ruby felt betrayed at this. She believes that she's become a burden to us, and we don't care about her anymore. She told Grace that if she'd worked, things might have been better for us, for her. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Before I could act, Grace slapped my daughter. Let me assure you that Grace is a beautiful soul, just like her name. She's polite, soft-natured lady who's lived her entire life for the people she's loved. She's the kind of person one finds himself relying on. Someone who's going to hold your hand at the worst time and do everything in her power to help. She's my anchor. Always has been. And to watch her tremble and hit someone, I wish I could erase that memory from my mind. After Grace retired to her room, I told my daughter that she'd gone too far this time. Ruby didn't bother lowering her voice as she told me that she was only trying to be like the woman she admires, Grace. She wants to focus on the well-being of her child and ask for nothing but a bit of monthly contribution in return. Her retirement money simply won't be enough. We all know that, and it's the reason she's demanding that we consider our part of the income as her allowance. It's unacceptable, I'll tell you that. I've always earned just enough to put food on the table and pay the bills. 
Ruby's fees came from loans, some of which I'm still trying to pay back. Ruby knows this, and she blames me for that too. Sometimes I catch myself wondering if Ruby had put her medical degree to good use, she might have helped with the loans. It's not that I want her to pay for me, no. But I find myself thinking, this thought just comes out of nowhere, especially on the nights when I'm exhausted and my arms feel heavy from all the day's work. Am I the a-hole for thinking so? What's up, guys? Mr. Reddito. So before we hop into update number three, this one took quite some time to come out, but we're about to get some answers to some questions that were asked in the comment section. So here is update number three. Hey, so many of you have asked some questions regarding her current schedule. You're curious to know how she spends her day or if there's anything she enjoys doing. The answers to all your queries is simple. No. Ruby spends her entire day doing nothing productive. The moment she wakes up, she showers and has breakfast in the living room at 10 in the morning. She's always on her phone chatting and browsing about the interwebs. I don't know what she's looking for. My fatherly side hopes that she's searching for a job. Her true calling, as she says. She's got a number of friends and a blog where she makes posts every day. Sometimes she criticizes a celebrity scandal and other times she joins the debates about different political leaders. Suffice to say, she does nothing. I told her to find work or help me out at the bakery, but she turned me down. She told me that her retirement money is going to be coming in soon and there's no need for her to work. Then she went on and on about how her friends still get some allowance from their parents, so why can't she? I don't believe that she's hung up on Gabriel. She goes on dates with men she meets on social media and other dating sites. Sometimes even blind dates suggested by her friends. She shows no intention of settling down or even starting her own family. For Ruby, her parents and son are all she needs. Her dates top our expenses list every month and she's aware of it. She keeps telling us that she'll pay it back, but I've learned not to trust her words. Yesterday afternoon, I saw a flyer sitting on the dinner table. I asked Grace about it, to which she gave me a tight-lipped smile. I didn't need to hear the answer because I read it in her eyes. She was looking for a job? My Gracie, who spent decades being a housewife, is going to make a comeback. The only problem is we both know about the dropouts with decades-old experience hardly landing a stable job, right? I wish I could stop Grace and save her from getting hurt, but I can't. If we need to put food on our table and tend to little Cory, then we need to work. I'm sure my wife can get a job because she's good at what she does, but I worry about her declining health and the work hours she might be demanding of. Despite all this, though... A spark of hope ignites every single day. I find that Ruby has secured a part-time job. Much to my dismay, she'll always just end up leaving by the end of the week or even after a few days, but I can see that some part of her still wants to work. It's just that she hasn't found the one job that she'd enjoy doing above all else. Sometimes I wonder if there's any that will satisfy my daughter. Update number four. Yes, I've taken my daughter to a career counselor and let me just say that the meeting had turned out to be a horrendous idea. Ruby was baffled and accused me of not understanding her feelings, her words, spoken in anger and hurt still haunted me. She blamed me for erasing her personality if I'd let her grow without my influence with various options in front of her then she would not have turned out the way she did. She told me that I had not enforced my dream on her. She might have had success in life. I demanded to know that something could have been, but she had no answer. Our argument that day had gone nowhere, and that was the last time we talked about her career. Ruby's first check for retirement money came in early today. She was beside herself. Regardless of how much I'd wanted, I couldn't share her joy, nor could my wife. Ruby ordered a scrumptious dinner, which filled our table. 
It was her way of treating us and urging us to share her happiness. Little Cory, he was ecstatic. I can still recall his face, the wide and twinkling blue eyes he had. They shone as he looked at his mother with awe. That look sent hurt rolling through me, but it evaporated the moment Cory asked for a gaming console. He'd heard someone mention at daycare. As far as I recall, Grace and I never shouted at Ruby. Not even when she'd lost Grace's watch given by her parents or when she'd run my cheap car into a tree. I was shocked to see her rebuke her son, who'd put forth the childish desire. Grace tried to talk some sense into our daughter, but it turned out to be a mistake. Ruby demands that we get Corey what he was asking for and she'd consider our monthly share in the expense. At that moment, I felt more like a business partner than a father to my daughter. I might not have logged in and shared today's update if not for Grace, because before going to bed, I heard her sniffling. When I asked, she said that she was coming down with a cold. I'm no fool. I've spent decades with my wife and I can read her as easily as she can read me. Ruby's attitude is absolutely breaking her apart. And we're helpless because we love her so much. Everything aside, I know that the time's come to make a change. To make a stand against the woman with whom I share my last name. But there seems to be no love lost between us. Whatever my decision will be, it's going to hurt all of us. But for Grace's sanity and for Corey's future, I'll have to handle my heart <laughs> against my only child. Lastly, I might not be making another post. While I appreciate all the support I've received here, I believe that I'll have to be the one to change things. It'll be me who's going to have a final say about what to do with my daughter. After all, it was my love that blinded me enough for things to turn out the way they have. Update number five. Final update of the story. Ladies and gentlemen, strap your seatbelts. Hey everyone, it's been a while, I know. I'm surprised to read the consolation I've received here. Your support and understanding means a lot to me, and over the past few weeks, I went out of my way to meet with some lawyers and therapists. I sought their counsel and considered the options laid in front of me. Honestly, I was surprised at so many alternatives that were even possible. I'd wanted to discuss them with Grace, but I didn't. Grace, being a mother, did not want to see her daughter in pain or in tears. I admit that I'd shared that sentiment, but I knew that I could not let my child rot away at home by doing nothing. I still feel Ruby's accusations echoing in the corridors of my mind. Even after she's gone, I've considered her words about how she might have been different had I not imposed my dream on her. Then I think about the determination with which she'd work to become a doctor. I'd ask her countless times about what she wanted to do, and her answer had always been the same. Years later, she still refuses to acknowledge those words. Corey is an intelligent boy who has inherited his mother's brains. He wants to become a pilot and seems passionate about it. I don't say a word, nor does Grace, but Ruby has begun to fill her child's mind with absolute poison. She stops at nothing to tell her only son that being a pilot isn't something one could be proud of. Once Corey mentioned that he'd wanted to become a doctor like his mother, and Ruby had flown off the handles at the words. She told him how he'll have to work as a slave all his life, and still, that won't make anybody happy. Honestly, I was baffled at the way she reacted. But no, that was not all. I took it upon myself to visit Corey's daycare. With the way she treated him at the dinner table, I couldn't ignore the nagging feeling in my mind. My visit proved my doubts right. Corey's teachers at the daycare complained about the lack of interest Ruby shows over time. Ever since she started leaving him at the daycare, she'd never bothered the visit or ask how her son was even doing. I was horrified to learn that Corey was bullied and was always without lunch. Corey was one thing in Ruby's life that I trusted her with ever since she came back. The meeting was it. I didn't come back home, didn't even tell Grace about what I've discovered. 
With a sinking heart, I'd come to realize that my daughter was not qualified to have Corey's custody. Giving Corey into her care would easily destroy that boy. And being the grandfather, I could not see that. Hence, I decided to take Ruby's son. To separate mother and son till Ruby does something about her life? And I wasn't going to keep her there. Not anymore. And for that, I sought the help of the law. After careful deliberation, I filed a suit against my own daughter. I never told Grace. I just couldn't. Instead, I took the help out of my friend and my employer. He'd seen me suffer countless times, and he'd offer his help, but I'd always declined. How could I show an outsider the mess that's become of my life? The moment Ruby receives the notice, all heck broke loose. She screamed like a mad woman and called us names. Yes, she did that. Ruby kept asking me one question over and over again. Why did I do that? She blamed me for not talking to her and for my negligence in understanding her. She couldn't believe that her own parents weren't ready to give her some time and space. I wish I could tell her and make her understand that we've been given her space for years. Well, that we've been waiting for her to get back on her own feet for years. I just listened to every word and accusation she had thrown at us. When she was done, she'd realized that no matter what she did, she wasn't going to change my mind. I wasn't going to withdraw the suit, and the time had come for her to make some decisions. And one night, just like that, Ruby left. At first, Grace blamed me, and my neighbors and my friends held me responsible too. They told me that I'd poisoned my girl with my love and by fulfilling her every wish. I'd kept her sheltered, afraid that her intelligence would be married by the cruel and selfish world. I'd forgotten that it was the people who made the world such a livable place, and my daughter was one of them. After everything that had gone down, I still don't understand the change in her. How did it happen? Why did it happen? I know my daughter wasn't the kind of woman that she's become. You must be curious about what I accused her of. How come the court took my side? Well, as an adult, she was obligated to pay at least 25% of the rent at whatever she pitched in. I didn't even amount it to 20% of the total monthly expense. The laws were clear. Once someone is 18, he or she has to start paying for their residence, and parents have the authority to charge their children for it. I felt horrible, accusing her of not paying us for the stay, but I had Grace and Corey to look after. Ruby had a medical degree, and I forced myself to believe that she'd be able to take care of herself. The court did give Ruby an option to stay with us and pay 25%, but to my and Grace's horror... She declined. She told everyone who'd listened that when her parents had given up on her, she wasn't going to beg anyone to provide her a roof. I'll be honest, I was afraid after her declaration, but later, she'd put my mind at ease. Outside the court, after the final ruling, she caught me before I could get in my old beat-up car with Grace and Corey. She had not spared a look for her own mother and her own son when she talked to me. She'd promise me that she'd show me that she was worth more than I gave her credit for. Well, I smiled at that because that's what I've wanted to see all along. Now, six months later, I don't know where my daughter is. Often, she sends postcards, but all of them come from random locations, and they're addressed only to Corey. She's still mad at us and hurt at how things unfolded, but it was simply something that had to be done. I'm sure that my daughter's still looking for work, struggling in the competitive world out there to land a stable job. She'd already applied for early retirement. I doubt it's easy for her to cancel it. If she did, she'd have to pay all the money she received. Even today, I catch myself wishing to help her, and it's something that hasn't changed for years. Something Grace said one morning is still stuck in my head like a broken record. She told me that we've poisoned our own child with too much love. She said that we were blinded by her and did everything we could to think it was good for her. Yes, it was for her, but it was corrupting her at the same time. 
No matter what the world says, the kind of adult she becomes is because of my unwavering support and love. The knowledge of the wrong we've done haunts us even now, and we're trying our best not to make the same mistakes with little Corey. So I leave you with one question. Am I the a-hole for filing lawsuit against my only child and for kicking her out and taking her son away from her? Alright guys, so the comment section of this one was going absolutely bananas. Half of the people are arguing saying OP did nothing but push his daughter and pressure her into something she didn't even want to do. Then the other half is saying the father gave her every opportunity to decide the path she wanted to go in life. He was only ushering her to be a doctor, but not forcing it. Either way, he would have paid for an education if she would have told him what she wanted to do. So guys, that's the two major arguments. Let me know which side you fall on. Go ahead and post a comment down below and tell me whose side you're on in this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section which part was your favorite. And also consider subscribing as it is the best way to support me. Guys, have a great day and remember it's cool to be kind.